take a seat, Mr. Worthing. Thank you, Lady Bracknell. I prefer standing. I feel bound to tell you, you're not down on my list of eligible men. I have the same list as the dear Duchess of Felton. We work together, in fact. However, I am quite ready to enter your name, should your answers be what a really affectionate mother requires. Mm. Do you smoke? Well, yes, I, I must admit, I do smoke. I'm very glad to hear it. A man should always have an occupation of some kind. There are far too many idle men in London as it is. Now, how old are you? Twenty-nine. A very good age to be married at. I have always believed that a man who desires to be married should either know nothing or everything. Which do you know? I know nothing, Lady Bracknell. I am pleased to hear it. I do not approve of anything that tampers with natural ignorance. Ignorance is like a delicate exotic fruit. <laughs> Touch it and the bloom is gone. The whole theory of modern education is radically unsound. Fortunately in England at any rate, it produces absolutely no effect whatsoever. If it did, it would prove a serious danger to the upper classes and probably lead to acts of violence in Grosvenor Square. Now, what is your income? Between seven and eight thousand a year. In land or in investments? In investments, chiefly. That is satisfactory. What between the duties expected of one during one's lifetime and the duties exacted from one after one's death, land has ceased to be a pleasure or a profit. It gives one position and then prevents one from keeping it up. <laughs> That's all that can be said about land. I have a country house with some land attached, of course, about 1,500 acres or so, but I don't depend on that for any of my real income. In fact, as far as I can make out, the poachers are the only people that make anything out of it. A country house? Hmm, how many bedrooms? Well, never mind, that point can be cleared up afterwards. You have a townhouse, I hope. A girl with a simple and unspoiled nature such as Gwendolyn can hardly be expected to reside in the country? Well, I own a house in Belgrave Square, but that is let by the year to a lady Bloxham. And of course I can get that back whenever I like, at six months' notice. Lady Bloxham? No, I don't know her. Well, she goes out very little. She's a lady considerably advanced in her years. Ah, nowadays that is no guarantee of respectability of character. What number in Belgrave Square? Oh, the unfashionable side. I thought there was something. However, that can easily be altered. Do you mean the fashion or the side? Both if necessary, I presume. Now, what are your politics? Well, I'm afraid I really have none. I'm a liberal unionist. Ah, well, they count as Tories. They come and dine with us or come in the evening at any rate. Now, to minor matters. Are your parents still living? To lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. Who was your father? He was evidently a man of some wealth. Was he born in what the radical papers call the purple of commerce? Or did he rise from the ranks of the aristocracy? I really don't know, Lady Bracknell. The fact is, I had said I'd lost my parents. It would be near the truth to say, my parents seem to have lost me. I don't tr truly know who I am by birth. I was... Well, I was found. Found? The late Mr. Thomas Cardew, an old gentleman of a very charitable and kindly disposition, found me. He gave me the name Worthing, as he happened to have a first-class ticket to Worthing in his pocket at the time. Worthing is a, a town in Sussex, a seaside resort. And where did this charitable gentleman with a first-class ticket for a seaside resort find you? In a handbag. A handbag? Yes, Lady Bracknell, I was in a handbag. A somewhat large, black, leathered handbag with handles on it. 
very ordinary handbag, in fact. In what locality did this Mr. James or Thomas Cardew come across this ordinary handbag? In the cloakroom of Victoria Station, which was given to him in mistake of his own. The cloakroom at Victoria Station? Yes, the Brighton line. The line is immaterial. Mr. Worthing, I, I confess to being somewhat bewildered by what you have just told me. To be born, or at any rate, bred in a handbag, whether it had handles or not, seems to me to display contempt for the ordinary decencies of family life that remind one of the worst excesses of the French Revolution. And I presume you know what that unfortunate movement led to. As for the locality in which the handbag was found, a cloakroom at a railway station might probably have been used to conceal a social indiscretion. Has probably been indeed used for that purpose before. But it could hardly be regarded as an assured basis for a recognised position in good society. If I may ask you then, what would you advise me to do? I need hardly say I would do anything in this world to ensure Gwendolyn's happiness. I would strongly advise you, Mr. Worthing, to try and acquire some relations as soon as possible and to make every effort to produce one parent of either sex before the season is quite over. Well, I don't see how I could possibly manage to do that. I, I could produce the handbag at any moment. It is in my dressing room at home. I really think that should satisfy you, Lady Bracknell. Me, sir? But what is it to do with me? You can hardly imagine that I and Lord Bracknell would allow our only daughter, a girl brought up with the utmost care, mind you, to marry? into a cloakroom and form an alliance with a parcel? Good morning, Mr. Worthing. <laughs>